Hello and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian, and if you're trying to decide which class you want to play in Swords of Legend Online, I hope this video is a help to you. As with most online RPGs, the question as to which class you should play is really a critical one, and so it's with this guide that I hope to give you an overview of each class and their two specifications to, that you can select to alter your playstyle and your role. Swords of Legends Online uses a Holy Trinity approach to classes, but each class can actually play two different roles depending on your choice, and you can always change your role outside of combat whenever you wish. It's also important to note that with this game, you'll actually have five character slots, but there are actually six classes at the start of this game, so you're going to ultimately have to make a choice, and there really aren't any ways to expand the character slots outside of future updates where they plan to add more classes and expand those options for you in the future, but there's no way to purchase additional character slots at the time of this recording. So if you're watching this video in the future, hello from the past, uh, be sure to check the top link in the description of this video for the solo playlist so that way you can get caught up on any future guides, news, discussions, and more regarding this game. So I'd love it if you hit sub to the channel, hit that like button, and let me know what class you're going to be starting in the comments below. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back Soul Nation, you're a magnificent beast, and that's what you get for subscribing to the channel. Free compliments at the start of these videos. So let's dive into the six classes. You have Reaper, which can play melee and support. Think support as kind of diving into the healer role. You have Bard, that's ranged and support. You have Summoner, that can play ranged and support as well. Berserker, melee and tank. Spearmaster, melee and tank. And Spellsword, ranged and melee. And with that quick summary out of the way, let's dive first into the Reaper. This class is said to be a manifestation of death itself, capable of hunting down its enemies with increased speed and strength while being able to teleport to other locations and to swiftly and stealthily spring traps on their enemies. The two roles that you can play within the Reaper class, the support role is the Occultist. This is schooled in the ancient and healing techniques. Reapers can also become Occultists by sacrificing their own blood, they can call on the mercy of the goddess Nua to support their allies in the game. They can also boost their teammates up with special breeds of insects, allowing them to perform beyond their normal capabilities. Plus, they can select a teammate to share damage with that they receive and with them increase their survivability. Honestly, I think that's really cool from a blood healer perspective. You get to dive in and probably going to pick your tank if you want to share that damage with somebody else on your team. But let's say you don't want to play a healer reaper, you want to play an assassin, a melee reaper. That is the other role of the reaper, the assassin in this case. The reaper commands a range of powerful curses and breeds poisonous creatures to deploy in combat. In the darkness, they lie in wait for their enemies, attacking with lightning speed and mercilessly cutting them down with the swing of their scythe. If that is something that appeals to you, if you want to be able to go melee and also have the option for support, you should absolutely consider checking out Reaper. Now we move into the Bard. The Bards play an important role in combat by providing their allies with supporting damage or protection. They can also summon a special furnace that they both, uh, they and their allies can use to apply buffs before adventuring into combat themselves. The ranged spec for the Bard is the Dissonance. This is where spiritual energies of the five elements dance in the tune of the Bard's music. Using their virtuistic skills, bards can harness these elements, weaving specific effects into their magical attacks. This symphony of tone and element is what makes the bard's soul force so notoriously powerful. And if you're not feeling ranged, you want to go in that support role, you can also go into harmony. This is the support role for bard, and you can manipulate the spiritual energy of the five elements and channel their soul force to heal the wounded and dispel evil spirits. Their magic can be used to protect their allies from harm by surrounding them in protective shields that mitigate damage or encase them in ice to avoid fatal blows. So that is essentially your two roles for Bard. Honestly, I love the, the, the shield healer of the harmony support. That's my preferred healing style in RPGs, but you let me know what is your preferred style as well. Then you could also choose from a summoner. Summoners can conjure various spirits to aid them while in combat, and they can use that spiritual energy to damage foes or support their allies in combat. Their minds working in union with nature. They can also summon a tiger companion, which they can ride on their journeys. If you want to play the ranged summoner, you're going to pick Nature's Wrath. 
Offering themselves as a nature's tools, summoners can use their innate ability to summon spirits to attack their opponents. Their powerful soul force allows them to channel their spiritual energies into a gleaming beam of light to smite down their foes, whether it be a fox-like companion, Mingishi, or a golden feather, or a creature that will briefly attract the attention of their enemies. Nature's Wrath summoners can adapt various forms in combat. If you want to go the support role, you can go Nua's Blessing. This is channeling the flow of the spiritual energies through their prayers of devotion. Nua's Blessing summoners can cast a range of effects of heal their teammates over time. The healing fairy Malu can be summoned to further sustain their allies through challenging fights or commanded to be used to specific skills when in trouble. If great swords are more to your liking, you might consider playing the Berserker. The Berserker class possesses the ability to actually also transform into a wolf, which can even function as a mount for another ally. You can also tear through enemies by inflicting great damage by even riding atop of your greatsword. The Berserker's two specs are Slayer, which is their melee spec, combining the essence of Shagon with the finest swordsmanship in the Empire. The Slayers slice and dice their way through the front lines regardless of cost, using swift and brutal attacks to bring enemies to their knees before they have a chance to react. Certain skills can actually create phantom warriors who can be ordered to attack enemies in tandem with the Slayer. If you want to go with a tank role, you're going to want to pick Drunken Masters. Drunken Masters use a specifically brewed medicine wine to make their movements and attacks even wilder and less predictable, granting them a fortuitous edge in combat through their intoxication. They can harness the force of the wind and block enemy attacks or summon a wolf whose howls stir their allies into frenzied action as well. Now, if you're wanting a different kind of tank, you might want to consider playing the Spearmaster. Thanks to their ingenuity and their manual dexterity, the knowledge of mechanics, Spearmasters have the power to summon special constructions which they and their allies can sell superfluous items to. This device can also repair damaged gear for a little gold while on your adventures. The tank spec here is the Phalanx. Can't spell, can't say that word for, <laughs> to save my life. Uh, with the expert use of their armor, their Spearmasters become a living bulwark whose fighting spirit is utterly unswerving. Mounds crumble faster than these armored heroes who are capable of dashing to their targets in an instant and pulling them forwards to direct their attention away from allies. The Flanix uh, can position themselves in front of their team to reduce incoming damage by summoning a shield wall. I think it's also at this point, or should have said this earlier, I do struggle with uh, reading. I do struggle with some pronunciations. Uh, so please forgive me or just make fun of me in the comments. It's up to you. Either one, I think, is a fine option. All right, if you don't want to be a tank uh, Spearmaster, you want to be melee, you can pick the general. Uh, this is where your movements uh, originally developed by the Spearmaster's special technique. Spearmasters have an indomitable will, allowing them to keep a cool hand and even through the toughest fights while making deadly use of their skills. They can also use their spears to launch enemies into the air, incapacitating them while they land even more precision strikes. The final class here is Spell Swords. Spell Swords are well versed in many of the ancient techniques, including the art of teleportation, which allows them to move a whole team to a previously marked location. The Spell Swords tradition is based on the nine imperial sword techniques, which were honed and refined by the immortal Zheng Yang. So, if you want to play a ranged spell sword, you want to pick Sword Artist. As a ranged combatant, the Sword Artist use their key to manage their swords and make them fly. Attacking enemies safely from a distance and staying out of danger is made easier by driving enemies back with spells, as well as their unique ability to teleport to magical swords strategically placed around the battlefield. If you want to go with melee, up close and personal, in this case you want to go Bladestorm. Uh, Bladestorms can use powerful melee attacks to punish their enemies by setting up swords in a pentagon or pentagram-like shape uh, capable of stunning any hostile trespassers. These masters of ancient blades can move across the battlefield of swords of legends online with lightning speed, leaving behind their mere echoes of their previous location while striking their enemies with deadly blows. So, what are you going to pick? Are you going to go with the Swordmaster? Are you going to go with the Spearmaster? Are you going to go with the Berserker? Are you going to go Summoner, Bard, or Reaper? And I think I said Swordmaster rather than Spell Sword. <laughs> Yay for my wonderful dyslexia. Good times had, hopefully, by all. I hope, again, this video has been a help to you in giving you a good idea of what class to pick. And then as you dive into the game, uh, hopefully you have a wonderful experience with this upcoming MMORPG. I'll be sure to give you guys more impressions, hands-on, and deeper dive guides 
in the future as we get closer to release of this game itself. But for Ginger Prime, my name's Brian. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you have a fantastic day and I hope to see you in my next video. But until then, take care. This video is sponsored by me, Ginger Prime. Hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio, which we have lots of guests, lots of great conversations, and even more highlights. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think. Thanks.